Good morning, everybody. Um, some things were laid on my heart this morning. I'm, I'm going to start and read right here on my way to work. Um, John 1.1. 1, 1. Um, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 2, it says, The same was in the beginning with God. Uh, verse 3 says, all things were made by him and without him not anything made that was made all right so now i can start my drive uh but we just heard scripture right out of the word of god uh just as the scripture has just said in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so what i'm going to lay on your hearts this morning is the whole world lieth in darkness and in wickedness. Okay, so when when we want to play religion, you know, this might be a touchy subject for a lot of us, but when we want to play religion, you know, and we want to pretend and we want to say, oh yeah, I believe in God. Yeah, I believe in God. Yeah, I sure do. I sure do. But you never open your Bible and you get into the word when you just heard what the scripture said. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. Uh, we know that the word manifested in the flesh through 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. All right, so God was manifested in the flesh. We know Jesus was that word. He spoke, he said, specifically, he said, I didn't come to be ministered into, but I came to minister. Okay. There's another scripture in the Bible that also says that no man shall teach it to you. I posted that uh, on my Facebook page. I know a lot of y'all come to watch these videos and what you do with them is up to you. You know, and that's, that's the whole point of this message this morning. Your walk with God is your walk. You know, that Bible, the inerrant word of God, and you need to search those scriptures and find out what he has to say to you personally. Uh, but if you don't ever open your Bible and you're listening to man, you listen to me, you listen to everybody else, you listen to the world, you sure listen to the world. Uh, why aren't you listening to God? And, you know, you want to pretend that you have a relationship with God because you go through the routine of religion and you know you never open your bible you sit there on a the church pew or you sit there and you talk to somebody if somebody talks about the lord uh and you really don't fellowship in the lord hardly at all and all of y'all that are listening out there i want you to know that in your personal life i want you to just think about what's going on around you boy you sure hear about everything else but the lord you know, who's talking? What's the world talking about nowadays? I, I don't even watch the news. I can't stand watching the news because all they do is this. A gossip in busybodies about everything that's going on in the world. You know, but uh, Jesus said the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, much better promises come from the Lord. And, you know, half, half the people, I would probably say three quarters of the people, you know, don't even know the promises of the Lord because they're not in his word. You know, see, when it says no man shall teacheth you, you don't need any person to teach you when you believe God. What must one do to be saved? Believe on the Lord. So when you believe on the Lord, you believe what he says. Well, how do you know what he says if you don't open your Bible? There's his inerrant word left for us. And when you believe, he gives you the Holy Spirit to come and abide and dwell in you, live in you for eternity, to carry you all the way to heaven. It says an entrance shall be ministered unto you. See, you need to look up these scriptures. If you don't believe it, and what I'm saying, just Google just a little bit. Google a uh, Interest shall be ministered to you, KJV, King James Version. That's what I study out of. I love the King James Version because it's it's simple, plain English. 
It's not no watered down, diluted, translated over and over again. Just think about it. If you tell somebody something and, and it goes through 150 people, 135 people, then it's never the same story. That's what they did with the word of God. They translated over and over thinking it's gonna make it more easy to understand. Well, King's English is pretty easy. If you don't understand what ye means, then we got problems. Ye is you. Ye. It's not that hard. So if you ain't opening your Bible, you really ain't understanding what God has said to you personally. Because when I read a, a passage in the Bible, which it says the word was with God, the word was God, then I'm going to believe what the word has to say. And it says it to me because you want to know why? Because it's very specific when you open it up and it says, these things I have written unto you. Hmm, wonder who that you is. If it's the inerrant word of God and he knows that he says he will, his word will last forever and ever, even though this world will dissolve and burn with fervent heat, his word stands forever and you don't believe that his, he can't retain his word, then that's the problem in itself. You want to complain about everything going on in the world, but the whole world lieth in darkness. Uh, he said he was the light, but the people didn't want to come to the light because they preferred the darkness. So if you want to complain about this world and you want to not understand why people die, the wage of sin is death. Have you ever sinned? Yep, well, God promised that the wage of sin is death. So that's the payment you get for sinning is death. But God, see, those are two words that I love to see in combination in the Bible, in the scriptures, in the inerrant word of God, but God, because God is always there. He promised to never leave us, forsake us. King David understood that promise so hard that he could say by faith and by the power of God and understanding what God had told him that if I make my bed in hell, in hell, there thou shalt be also. So he knew that God would never leave him or forsake him. He knew the promises of God. He knew the loyalty of God's word and the promise, God that cannot lie. Said those things to King David. If you ain't in the word of God and you're listening to this video or you're listening to the preacher or wherever you're trying to get fed by the word of God, why don't you go directly to the source the word itself and let God teach you because we have the pride of life read it find it in the scriptures because we think we're in control of something that we can do all these things for ourselves okay what about can you reach in there and grab your heart and make it start working if you have a heart attack do you know where your next breath of life is coming from the scripture says that he breathed life into us. You're breathing because the Lord is breathing life into you. A lot of us don't even realize the clouds and the thunder. The sound of thunder is the voice of God that we yet not comprehend. Read it in Job. Find out what God has to say. See, in that limited knowledge, one of these days we're called to judge angels. If you've heard the scriptures, and the Lord has laid truth into your heart and you've read those things and you know they're true, then why don't you reach in there, open up the word of God, ask him for discernment, ask him for understanding and let him be in charge of your life to tell you the things that are coming. This is an errant word. You know, what's happening today in today's society is you have religion. And you have a watered down religion that strays away from the word of God. If he's not the ultimate authority. And, and you know what? I'll expect persecution if I, you know, I know what my calling is. And I, you know, I didn't want to live up to it. Because in my flesh, I know I couldn't. But when you're, when you know, and you can walk bold in the Lord, and you can talk bold in the word of God because we're all called to do it. I mean, people, this is serious business here. This is your soul and eternal security 
and salvation, not only yours, if you have children, it's your children and grandchildren and the generations to come. And the whole world is in wickedness. And it's from that fallen world of sin. And if you don't have the ultimate authority being God being first and foremost in your life, blab on and gossip to your children, blab on and gossip to your neighbor, and blab on and gossip and spread that kingdom of darkness. Because if you ain't talking about God and the kingdom of heaven, you ain't talking about nothing that lasts forever. See, that's the type of preaching the world needs. See, the inerrant word of God, the direct words out of the Bible from God. And when you're called to do that, he's going to call you. He's called you your whole life. Are you faithful with John 3.16? Have you told anybody about it? Are you? Do you believe it yourself? If you believe it, you're going to talk about it. You're not going to be ashamed. He says, you're not going to be ashamed of him. Are you ashamed of him? Are you afraid to mention Jesus in public? Are you afraid to talk to people in public about God? Then you're ashamed. Then you better search those scriptures and find out where your relationship lies with the Lord. Oh, but I go to church. Okay. You know, me being in my garage doesn't make me a car. Just like going to church don't make you a believer or a follower of Jesus. You know, I'm very, I get emotional about these things because it's real to me. It's more real than anything. It's the creator of the whole universe, God. The one that gives me the breath of life, gives you the breath of life. And we tend to want to just overlook, trample, and, and just like it means nothing if somebody loves you and wants to talk to you and wrote you a love story that is more real than life itself and you just overlook it every day and you let it collect dust and if you don't even have a bible what are you living for death That's serious business. Because what are you living for? You're gonna die. So you're living for death. I live for eternal life. I've been called for eternal life. So have you. You hear it? That's what I live for. I know when the truth came to me, I said, Lord, now what? He said, you're gonna live. You're gonna live and you're gonna tell people and you're gonna glorify me the rest of your life until you see me face to face. You know, it says we have an inheritance reserved in heaven. If you knew somebody was leaving you an inheritance, a trillion dollar inheritance, a big yacht, you'd be excited for it. And if you knew in that inheritance, that new inheritance had a beautiful mansion for you, reserved bedroom that you was gonna live in, sleep in. You'd be excited about it if it was in this world. But if you can watch your child die, if you can watch a loved one die in this world, none of that inheritance here means anything. God has promised us an inheritance in heaven, reserved. See, inheritance, reserved, and we have an appointment. Remember those three things, inheritance, reserved, and an appointment. We have an inheritance in heaven as believers, reserved in heaven, but we have an appointment. It is appointed once for man to die and women and then the judgment see those are inevitable truthful things that we cannot get around but i love all y'all reach out to me if you want to talk the flesh is just the flesh 
Let's talk about God. Let's talk about something real. And when you hear your calling, read those words and you'll speak bold in the Lord and you won't be ashamed of him. I love y'all.